we're talking about today. <laughs> yep, we're back again with Get Somewhere and Sit Down. We're calling this part two. But to be honest with you, it's probably going to be parts two and three. So get ready for that, okay? <laughs> Thank you so much. Listen, let me say this before we get started. I really appreciate you sticking around to see where I'm going with this when I talk about Get Somewhere and Sit Down. Because sometimes, you know, with a subject like that, with a title like that, uh, get somewhere and sit down, it could be taken as or seen as offensive or as some sort of chastisement, and that's not it at all, my friend. So I'm grateful for those who uh, perhaps know me well enough to know that, that I don't mean any harm to anybody. I don't mean any disrespect, and, uh, and I thank you that there are those that that understand that I am indeed going somewhere with this kind of a topic or with this kind of a subject. And thank you that you don't mind taking the ride with me to figure out where I'm going, okay? Well, enough of all the uh, disclaimers. Uh, you do know what time it is, right? I mean, do you not know what time it is? It's time to, listen, it's time to get in this Word. It's hump day, Wednesday. And it's time to get the Word in us, in our hearts, and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, in our minds. So let me say welcome to Wednesday in the Word and thank you as always for joining us and thank you for being with us on this particular Wednesday, Wednesday, November uh, what, 17th? 17th. And I pray your strength in the Lord. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. And I really mean that. I'm not just quoting the scripture, I mean it from my heart. So let me say on behalf of First Baptist Church and myself, thank you to all of our um, Facebook friends and YouTube followers. Uh, we appreciate you so much being with us and thank you for praying for us. And thank you so much for all your love and uh, your support. Amen. I know, I'm not even going to ask you, have you been studying? Because I know you studied the Word. I know you studied the Scriptures. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A worker that needs not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. And I know you've been doing that, right? Amen. I certainly hope you have, because you know what the scripture tells us, you know, about some people said these were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. Listen, and what? Search the scriptures daily whether those things were so. They, they went back to study the Word of God. Amen? Amen. So it's always a good idea to study before we get together and to study after we get together. Study that Word. The Word works, and it will work for you. All right, let's dive in. Okay, now I told you, so I don't want to you know, waste any time, uh, because rather than, than doing a part three, I'm kind of lumping it all together, and you can divide it out to parts three, four, however you want to do it, okay? That's the beauty of it. You can stop, rewind, replay. You can do all of that. So I'm telling you up front, we've got a, a couple of different sessions sort of put together. So I'm giving it all to you today, okay? And then you can uh, you can sit down and listen and take it in uh, at your own leisure, all right? So it's going to take us a little bit more time today, but thank you for your patience, and thank you so much for bearing with us. And uh, I want to confess to you that when I embarked upon this journey of preaching, when I got started uh, preaching, when I realized that the Lord had called me to preach, you know, um, and I look back then, 30, 33 years ago, and then I look at today, and, uh, you know, then I didn't have the kind of nerves that preachers have today. I mean, I was scared. <laughs> I preferred listening over talking, and I preferred the low seat rather than the high seat, unlike many preachers today. I mean, it's a little bit different today. Uh, you know, some people, they love to be heard. They, they, you know, they, many of them like to sit high, and some definitely don't want to hear anything about going anywhere and sitting down. Okay, so it's a little different story today. But, you know, that's, that was my generation. This is their generation, so we're all good. But, you know, I was shy. I hardly knew anything about the Word of God or even very much about God. I mean, of course, I was saved and I was a church member, 
Uh, but, you know, that, that was it. I didn't show up in a blaze of glory and pump and circumstance. Really, when I started preaching, I kind of crawled in, peeping around every corner as I advanced on the scene. In fact, I hoped nobody noticed me even being in the room. I wasn't trying to be seen, and I wasn't trying to be heard. That confidence wasn't there. That comfort for me wasn't there. There was no danger in anyone having to tell me to go somewhere and sit down. But I must confess, there have been times uh, that people were busting every barrier, crossing every line, and moving about so erratically that honestly, I felt like that chastisement. I felt like that correction part. And I really wanted to tell them, you need to get somewhere and sit down. Yeah, I felt like that before. And I'm not sure, you know, I may have even told somebody that somewhere along my journey. Uh, but there are far too many saints that are losing the battles of life for lack of knowledge. And it's not because a lot of the uh, knowledge is not available, but because we won't avail ourselves to the knowledge. We run in here and there and all over the place, and we won't sit down long enough for anybody to teach us anything. I witnessed people popping up in the middle of a church service, completely out of order, talking about things that were irrelevant, inappropriate, and in some cases bordered on nonsense. I mean, that, there's no way that, that, that I would have ever thought that something like that was okay. I, not me, <laughs> no, I was afraid. People are bold these days, though. And, and really, on more than one occasion, I've had to turn preachers away from the pulpit. I've had to turn them around who just popped up in the pulpit as if they were walking into their own home. And I'm looking at them like, uh, excuse me, what are you doing? <laughs> Where are you going? I'm like, uh, may I help you? You know, and, and these are those kinds of situations. These are those things... As a young preacher, I never would have thought about doing that. I mean, that never crossed my mind to walk up in somebody's pulpit. Oh, yes. These are some good occasions to tell certain folk, get somewhere and sit down. It's not just the preachers. What about the choir members who run up in somebody else's choir stand? What about the deacons who run away in the deacons' corner in somebody else's church? You know, young preachers in my day, uh, and many are today, I don't want to make it sound like everybody's just out there buck wild, uh, but young preachers in my day, there was always a lot of talk about being humble. Stay humble, son, stay humble. Yes, we were humble, but mostly we were scared. <laughs> we were almost afraid to walk into a church uninvited, let alone walking up in the pulpit uninvited. Listen, I'm talking about even if we were invited to the pulpit, we're like, oh, no, please don't, don't call my name. I mean, you didn't just bust up into the choir stand or the deacon's corner and certainly not in the pulpit. No, you don't do that. At least I didn't. <laughs> but anyway, that, that's not the point of our discussion, okay? Uh, when I say get somewhere and sit down, it is a word of instruction. It is a word of uh, encouragement. I'm not here to chastise you, my friend. I'm not, you're not my child, and I'm not here to treat you like a child, amen? Uh, but it's a word of encouragement. Uh, to find somewhere, to find a place where the word and where guidance and where uh, direction and leadership are being served and sit and soak up all that you can hold. It's an appeal for clergy and for laity alike to crawl before you attempt to walk, to learn before you attempt to teach, to follow before you attempt to lead. Slow it down, get somewhere and sit down. Sit down before you make any attempt to sit up high. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you receiving what I'm saying? I want to encourage a commitment to discipleship, a commitment uh, to serve before wanting someone to serve you. This is why I say, uh, why I urge you, why I encourage you to get somewhere and sit down. Before jumping off the deep end, get somewhere and sit down. And... Uh, Watch this now and spend some time with yourself. Spend some time with yourself. 
please hear me. I, I, I'm going to talk real quickly, and then I'm going to go on. But I want to talk about spending time with yourself, spending time with other saints of God, whether it be preachers or faithful members of the body of Christ, and spend some time with God, of course. Amen. But spend some time with yourself. Spend some time doing what we used to call some soul searching. Hear me, please. Spend some time with yourself. I'm talking about before you even talk to anyone else, before you even, even before you go before God, other than to say to God, God, you guide me and lead me, okay? And I certainly understand that, and, and I certainly want to uh, confess and, and admit that we are to seek God's guidance in all that we do. But spend some time with yourself. Uh, uh, and you know, when I was growing up, I think it was with the early, late 60s, I guess it was, somewhere around there, Jerry Butler came out with a song, and uh, you know, you ought to be careful about the things that you listen to, the things that you hear, and the things that you take in, because sometimes you try to live it out. And sometimes that's good, sometimes it's not so good, okay? Because things can, um, things and people can influence us that way. Well, you know, Jerry Butler, he a wonderful singer. Oh, man, beautiful, deep voice. Oh, Jerry Butler, man, I loved his, and I still I love his singing. But Jerry Butler came out with a song that said, Go away and find yourself. I believe I'll go away and find myself. <laughs> oh, my goodness, man, that captured my attention. And I really thought about it. I need to go away and find myself. I need to figure out who I am. <laughs> you hearing me? So spend some time, get somewhere and sit down and spend some time with yourself. Again, doing uh, some soul searching and, and finding yourself. Uh, you know, because, um, you know, the truth of the matter is when we first begin in this Christian journey, not, you know, let alone the uh, preaching journey, but in just the Christian journey, uh, often we don't, we don't know what we are. We don't know whether we're Baptist or Methodist or whatever. We don't, we don't even know what all that means. We don't know whether it's important or not important. We don't even know what we're supposed to do as Christians, how we're supposed to live as Christians. I mean, many times when we are saved, <laughs> watch what I'm about to say. Many times when we are saved, we are lost. <laughs> we are lost. We don't have a clue. I, I know I received Christ as my Savior, but, but what's next? So go away and find yourself. Spend some time with yourself. Okay, then I want to encourage you uh, not only to, to get somewhere and sit down and spend some time with yourself, but get somewhere and sit down and spend some time with um, other saints of God. Uh, are you hear me? And I'm talking about faithful, faithful saints of God, faithful people of God, faithful members of the body of Christ. Get somewhere and sit down and spend some time, listen with uh, these saints who've been around uh, the block a time or two, those who are experienced and seasoned saints of God. And for the preacher, uh, get somewhere and sit down and spend some time with, uh, with other pastors and other preachers and those who have been in the vineyard for a while, who are stable and secure, amen? I mean, stable and secure preachers, preachers who are not threatened by your gifts and your abilities, okay? So there won't be a conflict there. Or preachers who would actually look out for you. Preachers who know church policies and procedures and preachers who know pulpit etiquette and preachers who will uh, correct you and, uh, and, and who will tell you the truth, whether you want to hear it or not. And preachers, you know, if you need it, who will chastise you. And it's all for, for our own good, Amen. Amen. Preach, uh, preachers who would discipline you. And I'm talking about doing all of this, of course, uh, in love. You hear me? All right. Before you start thinking that you could, uh, you could have uh, a preach that, that, if I tell you something, will you tell anybody? I mean, can we, I'm, I'm talking, can this just be between you and me? Yeah, you know, when I was growing up as a as a young preacher, I told you I was scared and, you know, I was, I was humble and, and all of that. But I got to confess to you, there were times that um, before I even knew how to preach that, you know, and you have to watch the devil because the devil will bring that arrogance and that pride in there and make you think you're somebody and something that you're not. And and I would think, you know, I think I could have preached that a little better than that. I, can't, I think I could have done it. Forget that, my friend. 
Forget that. Don't let the devil lure you out on a limb and then cut the limb off. <laughs> okay? So before, before you are, start thinking that you're going to preach that sermon better than they did before, you know, and don't let the members fool you into believing that they would rather hear you than hear their pastor. Hogwash. They always prefer to hear their pastor whether they think he can preach or not. And before you join that chorus of pastoral criticisms, and thinking that you could do a much better job than that pastor. Get somewhere and sit down. Listen, and get to know pastors. Uh, uh, get Listen now, watch, watch what I'm about to say. Get in a position where you can not only hear their voice, but where you can hear their heart. Amen? Keep your, this is all in love now, hold on. Keep your mouth closed tightly and your ears open wide and your heart and your mind open to leadership and open to instructions. Before thinking that you are God's gift to the world, spend some time thanking God for the gift of preaching and the gift of leadership. And spend time and energy developing that gift, that gift of God that he placed in you. Listen. Spend some time developing that gift so that you can give God the honor, give God the glory. And then, and then, of course, for the member, before you start criticizing and policing churches, and before you begin your journey of criticizing and condemning and judging other members of the church or even the pastor of the church or members of the body of Christ, before you get into all that, get somewhere and sit down. Get somewhere and sit down and spend some time, this is some time with long time members of the church, members who know what serving God is all about. Someone who knows church etiquette and knows church polity. Someone, listen, someone who can provide assistance, somebody who can keep you from bumping your head. Somebody can keep you out of a pit. Those saints of God who can provide guidance through what could be some rough terrain when you come into the church. Listen, members who are not bitter, members who are not angry, members who don't have a, a, a beef with the other members or with the church or with the pastor. Members who are not a burden to the church. Members who are not trying, listen, who are not trying to sabotage the church. There are people who claim membership in churches, but they're actually trying to sabotage that church. I'm talking about members who know the Lord and love the Lord and love his people. I'm talking about members, listen, who are actively, watch this now, who are actively involved in their church and support their church and their pastor. These are the kinds of members that you need to uh, hook up with, if you will, that you need to seek out. But big warning, get, get, get warning, please be aware of snipers and avoid snipers. You know who snipers are? Uh, those who sit and stand somewhere way off at a distance taking pot shots at the church and at the pastor and at everything and everybody else in the church. They're members, but they don't attend their church. Listen, they don't support their church. They are, listen, they are out there somewhere, out there somewhere wandering in the wilderness. Hear me? who have nothing but negative things to say about their church, have nothing but negative things to say about their pastor and their fellow members. These snipers are amazing. <laughs> they can tell you all the dark history of their church, and they can tell you all the personal business of their pastor. And they can make it their business. They do make it their business to intercept every potential member, every new member, and poison them before they can get to know what the real story is. Amen? If you don't know, you better ask somebody. They can tell you all the dirt on all the choir members. They can tell you all the dirt on the deacons. And they can tell you all the... Listen. They can tell you the story of the three little bears. And they can tell you about when Mama Bear had someone else sleeping in her bed. <laughs> Avoid these assassins at all cost. Now, you know, once you've done that, 
then uh, get somewhere and sit down. Get somewhere and sit down and commit yourself somewhere, commit yourself to some church and commit to some pastor. Try to get to where God wants you to be, okay? Because when we look at, at uh, what we call church membership or membership in the body of Christ, which I prefer to say, and I think it's more accurate, uh, but membership in the body of Christ, I mean, it requires certain things, and I'm not going into great detail today on that, but it requires responsibility. Say, say that, responsibility. Say it, responsibility. Responsibility. It requires not only responsibility, but it requires accountability. Again, I'm not going to go into detail, but it requires accountability. It requires availability. And it requires dependability. Are you hearing me? I mean, there are people out there, when you look at people that are, and I think that, that uh, I, I really honestly think that sometimes we're unfair. I think that sometimes, you know, we call people church hoppers and, and all of that. Uh, and, and, and there's no doubt there's some out there like that that just boop, boop, dot around and all of that, and, you know, zipping all over town and don't have any roots anywhere. Of course, there are those out there. But, but let, let me tell you something, though. Not everybody belongs where they are. <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm talking whether they're in our church, your church, doesn't matter. Some, there are some people there who don't belong there. So don't get all upset when, when God finally brings that to their attention and God finally gets them to where they belong. Everybody don't belong in First Baptist Church. Everybody don't belong under my leadership, per se. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God has a specific place for all of us. Right? And, and, and so... You know, uh, you know, young in my ministry, I didn't know anybody. You know, somebody leave our church, I take it personally. Where are you going? You don't like my preaching? <laughs> well, maybe they know. No big deal, okay? And, you know, and there are people who have left our church. I mean, and I don't want to make it sound like there were people I didn't love or people that I had some beef with. No. There are people who have left our church that personally I thought it was a good move. I thought it was a good move for them, and I thought it was a good move for us. And then there are some who have come to our church, many from other churches, that I thought was a good move. I thought that they had come home from where they did not belong to where they did belong. I thought it was a good move for them, and I thought it was a good move for us. So I don't get all uptight about the movement. Uh, I want what's best for the individual in terms of their relationship with God and what God requires of them and their spiritual growth and development. Okay, so I don't take that. I don't. I don't take that personally. Uh, and, and when it comes to people, I just take what people give. You know, I, I'm not about to get bogged down. And so, uh, you know, but but we have to begin to ask ourselves some questions. You know, when we think about um, moving and, uh, and and moving about, and I'm just talking about people who might make an occasional move or who might make uh, a once in a lifetime move. But now, those people out there who are just in and out and here and there, all over the place, all the time. That's a whole other breed right there, okay? That's another story, all right? Uh, so those are the ones that we're trying to get to get somewhere and sit down, uh, and, you know, because that, our spiritual growth depends on it. Whether we advance, whether we succeed in life or not, will depend on us being where God wants us to be. You know, do I belong here? Am I better here? Am I doing better here? You know, and we're always talking about WWJD, what would Jesus do? Well, what about, you know, WWJT? What would Jesus think? <laughs> Let me ask you, what does he think? What does Jesus think about where you are? What does he think about the move you made? What does he think about what you're doing? What does he think about uh, where you are right now? Okay, ask ourselves, do we understand our purpose? Are we in a place that is conducive to our spiritual growth and development? Don't get caught there. Don't stop right there now. Because when I say, oh, we're in a place that is conducive to our spiritual growth and development, um, let, me, let me cover that when, I, when I'm, I'm kind of scheduled to get to it, okay? I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Uh, but yeah, we want to be in a place that is conducive to our growth, that, is, uh, that, that lends itself to growing us and developing us, okay? So we have to ask ourselves that. Does, does the situation or the circumstances... Um, dictate a move. I mean, does it, you know, does sometimes the situation or the circumstances really uh, requires that we make a move. And I won't go into all the different, the various uh, circumstances or situations that may, um, that may apply there, but there are times that, you know, 
because of that situation, because of the circumstances, yeah, I got to go. I got to go. I got to move. And that could be with a preacher. That could be with a member. could be with anyone. Okay? I mean, you know, as I said before, some people are simply in the wrong place. And sometimes uh, we are somewhere that we don't belong. We're somewhere doing the wrong thing. We're somewhere in the wrong place. And sometimes, you know, those circumstances, situations will arise and, and help us to realize that. And we know that it's time to make a move. Okay? Now, we looked at John. Uh, chapter 6, the latter part of that chapter, and we were talking about, and I'm not going through that scripture again today, you read it, study it, I hope you already have, but continue to do that uh, in your own time, but you remember that, uh, that, that Jesus understood that there were some in that crowd that did not believe, that did not belong because they were not believers, and, uh, and, and so, and he talked about how uh, they are to be a part of the body of Christ, he says that we have to come to him we have to be in him and uh, and come through him to the father but then the word says uh, from that time many of his disciples and these were the members though the crowd that was following him they went back they walked no more with him and Jesus said as he looked around and saw them walking away uh, in a sense he looked over there at the deacons and said what about y'all are y'all going to he looked over there at the preachers, looked over there at Brown, and uh, you know, looked over there at Melody, looked over there at Minister Matthew, looked over there at Reverend Galen Sheets. Are y'all going to? <laughs> you know, so will you also go away? Uh, you know, so, and then Peter said, you know, Peter, kind of the spokesperson, uh, said, where are we going? Where, where, where are we going? And, 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 and listen, and I believe that, that we can answer that similarly, okay? Uh, where, where are we going? You're the one that, that, that you have the, the words of life. Where are we going? And then we can answer this way. Well, Pastor, where are we going? We are growing here. Not only are we growing here, but we are serving here. You are giving us the opportunity to not only grow, but you are giving us the opportunity to serve. And I'm going to talk about that in a moment. But listen, so, you know, if we can respond that way, where are we going? Where are we going? Not only to Jesus, but also to your leader, your spiritual leader. Okay? Because where are we going? Because you got to understand, um, that's that crowd. But we are this crowd. We are the believing crowd. We are the uh, committed crowd. And we are the saved crowd. We're, we're not just spectators, but we're saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. That's the crowd that we are. So where are we going? See, we understand that I'm where I, I need to be. Okay, let me give you a few things real quick. I told you now, I got, we got part two and three kind of lumped together here, so stop whatever you need to. Rewind, take a break, go eat, but come back and get started again, okay? Okay, number one, um, we, I, I said we're the same, sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost crowd. So number one, make sure that you are saved and not just a church member. Make sure that you are saved, my friend, and that you are a member of the body of Christ and not just a church member. This is the church. This is not a social club. This is not an entertainment center. This is the church. And, uh, and, and if you're going to be a member of the body of Christ, you must be saved, okay? So make sure, first of all, that you come to the table. Well, yeah, you can get saved in the church. You can get saved as a result of coming to church. That's good. But you want to make sure that you're saved, okay, my friend? Secondly, you want to make sure that you are stable, stable in your membership. Not shaky, not flaky, uh, uh, but that you are stable in your uh, memberships. Uh, let me ask you something. Um, uh, uh, are members still wondering where you are? Or have they just given up any hope of ever seeing you again? Are you... Are you stable? Are you dependable? Are you here today and gone tomorrow? Do you know in whom you have believed? Or are you still searching for a savior? Saved, <laughs> stable, thirdly, secure in your membership. Where your membership is, is not threatened by the new preacher in town. Where your membership is not threatened uh, by the last good sermon that you heard somewhere from somebody. Uh, do you question your salvation or your church membership? 
Are you drifting towards the, uh, the loudest voice, the prettiest face, the flashiest preacher? Are you drifting towards the best choir or the sophisticated and dignified crowd? Is that, is that the way you're going? Do you know where you belong? Let me ask you something. Are you securing your membership? Can you visit another church without changing your membership? <laughs> I said, can you go hear another preacher without jumping up? So, oh, I need to go here and join here. Can you listen to a choir sing without thinking, oh, I got to go and join this church so I can hear this choir every Sunday? Can you visit another church without your membership being threatened at your church? <laughs> Are you hearing me, my friend? Uh, that reminds me, um, old Eugene Gray, pastor of Saint, former pastor of St. John Baptist Church. Old, old Eugene Gray, quite a character. I love the guy. And um, I really kind of hated to see him go. You know, we only had a, what, a couple or so years together before he uh, relocated. Uh, but we fellowshiped a lot and we had a lot of fun together. You know, not just on a personal, personal level, but also within our churches. And, uh, you know, I go over there and preach for him. He'd come over there and preach. We always talked about, I'm going way across the street, you know, way over there to First Baptist, way, way over there to St. John. And, uh, and and sometimes, you know, his members would come to our church. Sometimes our church, our members would go over there to his church and, and uh, fellowship with them. Uh, but there was not a, a movement between churches in terms of somebody coming to First Baptist and then leaving St. John. said, well, I want to be a member of somebody leaving First Baptist going over there. said, well, I want to be a member there. Oh, yeah, that has happened in the past, but I'm talking about, you know, my tenure right now. I'm talking about my, my watch. Um, well, it's happened also on my watch. Uh, but but anyway, uh, you know, Green and I used to joke about, and, and, you know, people coming over here, we, you know, kind of changing churches and just going to fellowship with one another. And he says, uh, you know, he said to the church one day, he, he, he said, well, I don't mind you going over there to First Baptist Church, but you're going to have to park your cars over here. <laughs> And, uh, you know, so I kind of thought about that. Yeah, go to St. John, but make sure you leave your tithe here. And so we didn't have a problem with people just fellowship, but there was no real threat. You know, we weren't, you know, we weren't intimidated by each other or threatened by each other or anything like that. Thinking, oh, you're trying to steal my members. Get out of here. All right. But are you stable? <laughs> are you stable, preacher? Are you stable, member? Okay. Now, fourthly, uh, are you serving in your membership? Not just sitting, but serving. Do you contribute rather than consuming? Now, i got to take a moment here to explain that because I hear so many times, so many people talk about, well, I wasn't being fed. Uh, I wasn't growing. I'm not sure whose fault that is, okay? But let me tell you something, my friend. God will put you in a place. Oh, yes, God wants us to always be growing, wants us to always be fed. Yeah, 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 I get that. But your role there, and I have a quote that's coming out uh, within the next day or so, uh, but I have a quote that's coming out that says, uh, uh, your role may be contributing rather than consuming. Stop always wanting somebody to serve you, to feed you, to give you. God may have placed you there to give, to contribute, to serve, not to be served. And I know we always say, well, I just wasn't growing there. Well, were you serving there? Let me ask you that. Were you doing anything besides sitting there soaking up everything? Were you making any contribution to the body of Christ? Were you making any contribution to that church? Or were you just there to get all you could get out of the deal? Okay, I'm back. <laughs> were you contributing or were you just consuming? Okay? All right. So make sure you're serving and not just sitting. Then fifthly, uh, uh, are you supporting your membership? Are you supporting where you are? Again, part of that support is serving. Part of that support is giving. Part of that support is being there. Part of that support is praying for your church, assisting your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Are you contributing where you are? Listen, my friend, whatever you call your church membership, whatever you call, you know, your church, wherever you currently attend church, wherever you currently serve, are you a, are you a flight risk? Are you really all that committed? In the time you've been there, have you really 
connected yet? Have you found your place there yet? Are you there to stay or are you just uh, there while you wait on the next big thing to hit town? Are you so connected and so committed that complaints and criticisms won't drive you away? Are you hearing me? I, 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 I mentioned this to you last week. Are you having a drummer issue or are you having a doctrinal issue? Get somewhere and sit down. Too many of us lack commitment. We lack that consistency. Don't be so quick to jump ship. Don't be so quick. Don't be in a hurry to separate yourself from the situation. That just may be where God has placed you. Don't, don't, don't listen, don't jump, don't cut and run because you think it's not working for you. Situations that are not working for you may be waiting for you to work for it. Your purpose, again, in being there may not be to consume. God may have placed you there because he has placed something within you to contribute to the body of Christ. It may not be for you to get, you know, that, that you can get all you, know, all you want to get out of. It may be for you to contribute something to the situation. Are you hearing me? Are you looking to be fed? What about feeding sometimes? What about you doing the feeding sometimes? What about you doing the serving sometimes? And listen, my friend, you know, all this stuff about I'm not growing. I'm not. This. Stop trying to be so deep. You know, as a preacher, I'm not trying to be deep. I'm trying to be effective. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to connect. I'm trying to reach people for, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Listen, my friend, uh, you know, stop all this talking about, well, I'm not growing and I'm not being fed. Uh, um, you know, sitting around wanting everybody to wait on you hand and foot all the time. Listen, God has a purpose for you being where you are. Now, we, again, I know some of us don't belong where we are. But don't be caught among the fault finders. Don't be caught among the drifters. Don't be caught among the floaters, the, 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 those who are just zipping around, running everywhere. Don't be counted among the frail, the fickle, or the transient members. Because there are some people who are simply passing through. Please, get somewhere and sit down so you can grow. Get somewhere and sit down so you can serve. Get somewhere and sit down so that you can hear the voice of the Lord. Amen. Thank you again for your patience, my friend. Let's pray. Gracious God, we are so blessed, Lord, that you have spoken to us and that you continue to speak to us. Help us, Lord God, to calm down and get somewhere and sit down. I want to hear your voice. I want to feel your presence. Oh, God, please draw us nearer to thee. And God, give us that sense of responsibility, accountability, dependability, availability, and that sense of commitment and connectedness that we might be where you want us to be and that we may be doing what you desire for us to do. We bless you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, go on and enjoy your hump day. Today is Wednesday, hump day. And there's nothing like the Word of God to help you get over the hump too. Amen? Amen. Well, thank you, my friend. I appreciate so much you being here with us today. And uh, uh, you know where I'll be Sunday. Yeah, that's where I'll be. I'll be at church. I'll be at First Baptist Church, 1810 Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, Gainesville, Georgia, 30501. That's where I would be. And, uh, and I'd love for you to be there. Amen. I'm not asking you to, I ain't trying to steal nobody's memory. I'm not asking you to change your membership, but just come fellowship with us every now and then, okay? Park your car there, hitch a ride, and come to First Baptist, <laughs> okay? All right. And if you can't make it, I certainly would appreciate um, your prayers. Now, Sunday also, uh, because we're not going to be meeting next Thursday. Normally on Thanksgiving Day, we'll meet. Next Thursday is Thanksgiving Day, and uh, we'll not be meeting, so uh, we'll, uh, uh, Sunday will be our Thanksgiving emphasis, if you will, okay? I'm not sure my sermon is going to be that kind of Thanksgiving, <laughs> you know, uh, but anyway, we'll, that, we'll, we'll emphasize uh, Thanksgiving uh, on, uh, on, uh, on, on Sunday, okay? Uh, but again, I'm not sure my, my sermon is going to be quite uh, in, in line uh, uh, with that. 
because on Sunday, what am I preaching about Sunday? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'll be I'll be preaching Sunday. I'll, I'll be talking Sunday about um, uh, uh, it, it's under review. Oh, okay, uh, yeah, that's what I'll be talking about. Uh, I think that the subject that I've uh, laid out is under further review. Okay, you know we're in football season, so I'll be talking Sunday about under further review. I don't think you're going to miss it. I'm not going to miss it. I am going to be there to hear that one. Lord willing, and the creek don't rise, I'll be there. Amen. Go on now and enjoy your day. Be blessed. Take care of yourself. Take care of your family. And be safe, my friend. Until next time, may God continue to bless you and yours richly. God bless.